Okay, so without computing sums, find the difference between the right and left hand Riemann sums if we use 500 subintervals to approximate the integral from negative 1 to 1 of 2x cubed plus 4dx. Okay, so here's the idea. I mean, obviously you're not going to do 500, um, 500 rectangles to find the left and the right um, to approximate this integral and then find the difference between the two. That would just make zero sense at all. But let me, let me show you the idea, and we've talked about this before. You know, you have a function, and let's say you're finding the integral from a to b, and let's say we use uh, two approximations. Let's say we have left-hand approximation. Let's just make it with four rectangles. Okay, and then you have a right-hand approximation. So I'm going to start on the right side and go backwards. So what do you notice about the right and the left hand approximations? Well, remember, they, um, they share all of the middle uh, rectangles. Notice how this purple rectangle right here is the same as this green one right here. So they share those. And then again, right here, they share these. And they share um, this one with the other one. I kind of wrote over all of them. But basically what you have is that they're only, they only differ by two rectangles. The last one on the right and the first one on the left-hand approximation. That's the only one that they're different by. And so um, if we can find the first rectangle for the left-hand approximation and the last rectangle for the right-hand approximation, find the difference and uh, we'll be good to go to find the difference between all of them because they share all of the same middle ones. Okay, so let's do that. So um, the first thing we need to do is we need to find delta x, which is b minus a over n. So this is 2 over 500 or 1 over 250. Okay. Now then for the left, then we have x sub 0. The first x value that we evaluate at is going to be negative 1. So, so I'm just going to call it the, um, so the first, the first rectangle area is going to be the base is, um, so base times height. So the base is delta x times f of x sub zero, right? And so here we have that delta x is simply one over 250. f of x sub 0, that's, well, what is x sub 0? We just said that that's equal to negative 1. So that we just find that by plugging negative 1 into our function. So this is 2, negative 1 cubed plus 4, right? Okay, so then this gives us, um, this is going to be negative 2 plus 4, that's 2. So that's 2 over 250 or 1 over 125. So this is the area of the first rectangle on the left hand side. Okay, and then I guess I don't need that much space. Okay, so right here. Then I'm going to do the, um, the last for the right. So x sub, we'll call this x sub 500, that's the last one for the right hand approximation, um, is going to be positive 1. And so then we have the area, I guess I'm going to get a little bit more space here. 
Okay, so the area of the last rectangle is going to be base times height, which is delta x times f of x sub 500. And so this is simply equal to delta x, which is the same 1 over uh, 250, times plug in, well, x of 500, we just said that that's equal to 1. So that just means plug in 1 into your function. Okay, so then I get 2 plus 4 is 6 over 250, or in other words, 3 over 125. And so then all that means is that the difference, the difference between the right hand and the left hand approximation would be 3 over 125 minus 1 over 125, which is, of course, 2 over 125. And that's it. Okay, so here we have a interesting problem. We have um, that the terms of a left-hand sum used to approximate a definite integral are the following. And uh, what we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out, well, what's f of x and what's a and b? So um, what we need to do is we need to relate this to um, the the formula for the uh, Riemann sum approximation. So um, what we have is that the integral from a to b, let's write down the definition. So the, the integral is approximately equal to um, the left-hand approximation. Now, um, remember down here the index you write down how many um, rectangles you're going to use and so here we have if we look at this sum we have three so we're just going to call that L of three okay so this is going to be the sum if it's going to be the left hand it's going to be I is going to go from zero to n minus one which is two of f of x sub i times delta x okay now um, let's let's expand this a little bit um, so here, this is going to be the sum from 0 to 2 of f of x sub i, remember, is a plus i times delta x, and then times delta x. So now that we have it in this form, we, we can probably take a look at this and pick out the pieces. So. Let's grab first delta x. Well, remember, delta x is going to be on every single one of the uh, terms of the sum. So take a look at this. Notice how each one of these is being multiplied by a 4 thirds. And so that tells you that that's what delta x is. And notice there's that 3 on the bottom, which um, is the same as this 3. So that tells you that there are uh, three rectangles. OK. So delta x is 4 thirds. OK, but that's not what I wanted to find. I needed to find f of x, a, and b. Well, you can pick out a because a is equal to 2. You can see it right here. a is equal to 2. And if you um, take a look now a little closer, it's probably sort of coming together. I goes from 0 to 2, take a look at that. From 0 to 2, that's i. And then notice right there you have delta x again, 4 thirds, that's delta x. Now, um, so that should be enough to find what a, well we know a is 2, so let's put this right here. a is equal to 2, but that's enough to find b already because if a is equal to 2 and delta x is equal to 4 thirds, then b would have to equal to 6. Because remember, delta x is b minus a over n. And you already know n is 3. So you have a is 2, b is 6. Now what about f of x? Well, that's your function. And that you find by looking at the um, sort of the structure of your sum, notice how you have, well, what are you plugging x sub i into? Well, you're plugging it, you're, you're the whole thing, you're squaring it. So your function is just going to be 
I'm letting you think about it for a second. X squared, right? Because that's what you plug in a plus i times delta x, or in other words, 2 plus i times 4 thirds. So notice how all of these are being squared. And so that's it.